This week, we've had listed house builders by Overson Persimmon announce stronger than expected financial results, but both have warned that a shortage of skilled labour is hindering their ability to increase their level of production. The scale of the problem across the building industry is highlighted by research from the Federation of Master Builders. It says two-thirds of small building firms are having to turn away work as they can't find enough skilled workers. Uh, I've been joined by Hayley Ellis, Director of Training and Membership at the Federation of Master Builders. Um, Hayley, I wonder if I could start by asking, uh, um, could you talk us through the scale of the shortages, please? Yes, the research that we conducted with our members in July, um, as you mentioned, it says that uh, two-thirds of our members are reporting that they just don't have enough skilled workers to be able to complete all the projects that need to be done. This varies from place to place, but it's around two-thirds across the UK. And that covers that is across the board, really. So bricklayers, carpenters and joiners, plasterers, scaffolders... Um, and site managers and supervisors as well, uh, all of them are in short supply. And that's obviously meaning that our members are not only unable to complete and take on projects, but half of our members are also saying that it's affected their ability to grow their businesses because they simply can't take on the larger projects. And I see you said that a number of firms have uh, effectively been forced to, to subcontract and take uh, kind of push the work on to other uh, firms because they have been unable to find uh, sufficient um, uh, members of staff. Yes, that's right. And uh, uh, it goes back really to the recession that we had 2007, 2008, which affected construction particularly badly. That meant that not only were a lot of skilled workers lost from the industry, but also um, we weren't training enough apprentices at that time. So uh, even in 2013, we only trained 7,000 apprentices, but the need in the industry is for about 35,000 more skilled workers to fill that gap. So you can see there's a, a big challenge there and, and a huge potential problem because, of course, all the government's plans to um, build big infrastructure projects as well as all of individual homeowners' plans to extend and refurbish their properties and new build uh, and affordable housing projects that need to be done all rely on having enough skilled workers to be able to actually do them. And we've been talking a lot about uh, house prices uh, on Share Radio uh, mm. and how they're kind of going up. One of the major factors is the shortage of supply of housing. So this is a fact. This is a, a problem which is not just affecting the building trade, but is having a much wider knock-on effect, isn't it? Yes, that's right. I mean, we do have some workers from overseas coming in to fill some of those gaps, but of course that, that's not going to solve the problem. And in the long term, we also need to be nurturing our homegrown skills and talent amongst our own young people and, and giving them the chance of having a rewarding and fulfilling career in the construction sector as well. Uh, you mentioned the, the level of um, the number of apprentices needed to fill the uh, the vacancies available. Mm -hmm. uh, currently looking at 35,000 a year mm -hmm. uh, uh, needed, but only 7,000 people qualified uh, that using that route last year. Yeah. What's what's behind the, uh, the the shortfall? I mean, are, are people being put off? apprenticeships in the building trade? There are probably a lot of different reasons, but yes, um, young people seem to have been, had had the message given to them over recent years anyway that uh, an academic route is preferable um, as a good um, preparation for having a successful career, that going off to university, um, accumulating a lot of student debt, etc., is is the way to go. But, of course, that's meant that vocational education, like construction, has had um, less less favourable press, if you like, and a less favourable image with the young people um, coming through. And, and, of course, the careers service uh, has suffered from cuts and isn't quite what it was. There's, there's less um, ability for people to organise things like work experience placements than there used to be. So a lot of young people just don't know what the opportunities are out there in the construction sector for them. And it's much wider than just the traditional craft skills as well. There are all sorts of careers such as quantity surveyors, um, you know, building surveyors, whole range of different uh, careers within the construction sector which require a whole different sets of skills to take them up. So we would certainly um, advise young people to look further into the apprenticeship route in construction and um, see that as a, as a way to getting a really satisfying career where you can actually see the results of your labour, if you like, in terms of a building that will stand there for 100 years after we've all gone and, and is something really tangible that people can um, take satisfaction from. 
I mean, it's interesting you mentioned the the, the law of um, or the expectation for some people to go on to higher education. Mm-hmm. There were some figures out to, earlier today from the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development showing that I think it's more than 50 percent of graduates are now in what would be considered to be non-graduate jobs. So, yeah. I mean, there clearly is a large number of people who are, are uh, uh, going to university yeah. uh, without getting the professional um, uh, rewards for that. Uh, that, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, th- another statistic that was just published today um, was that I think in Germany, something like 31% of young people after leaving school go on to university, whereas in the UK, it's something like 54%. So uh, a lot more people are going down the vocational route in countries like Germany than in ours, which, um, you know, it, it does explain to some extent the, the skill shortage that we have in construction, that there, there may be people out there who've perhaps gone down the wrong route and, and are now sitting there with a hefty student loan to repay and, as you say, not not in a job where they actually need a degree to do that job. So it, it's it's worth people thinking a bit hard before they go down that route about what the alternatives might be. I mean, you mentioned the uh, the level of, of student debt that people can accrue uh, by uh, undertaking further study or a, a degree. Mm. Um, one of the factors... Um, that potentially might be putting people off apprenticeships is uh, the, the money involved in the, in the building trade. But I mean, are people uh, potentially um, not fully understanding the, the, the financial rewards of working in the uh, in the building trade? Yes, definitely. I mean, for a start, of course, they're not paying a student loan back. And so whilst they're training as an apprentice, they may not be earning high salaries at that stage, but then that is an investment in their future and they are at least earning rather than having to pay fees. Um, once they're qualified, skilled people around the age of 23 um, can be earning around £30,000 a year for uh, skilled carpenters and bricklayers and up to 50000 per annum in London where the skills shortages are even more acute. So there certainly are some well-paid roles out there for people to um, to entice people into the sector. I think the, the message just hasn't got out to young people that that is the case. Um, I suppose people are still thinking of construction maybe as an industry that's been in the doldrums, but it's very much in in the growth phase now. So um, it's certainly something that young people should be thinking about. And we've got um, GCSE results out tomorrow. Uh-huh. A lot of people got their A-level results last week. What would you say to young people who are starting to think about uh, their future direction and, and uh, uh, options for their professional and uh, working lives? Yeah, well, I would encourage any young people out there to look at the apprenticeship possibilities. Um, there's lots of information out there on the National Apprenticeship Service website. In con- construction specifically, there's the CITB, the Construction Industry Training Board website, which has a lot of information both for employers looking to take on an apprentice and for uh, young people themselves to find out more about apprenticeships and the vast sort of array of different roles that they could potentially take on within construction. So certainly that's uh, worth thinking about for young people who, who are maybe weighing up the options, as you say, at the moment. I've been speaking to Hayley Ellis, Director of Training and Membership at the Federation of Master Builders. Uh, Hayley, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.